So today, there's going to be a few takeaways. And what I thought I'd do, is this is the first one, is have a little bit of a kickoff with what I'm calling thinking tools. Now, this will all come clear as we go through it. But there's three areas I'm going to cover. The first one is what I'm calling the Blueprint Toolkit. So you'll know in the, in the Total Memory Blueprint, there are six modules. And what I've done is I've pulled out 14 of the key strategies. So if you've been through the blueprint already, or if you just start and wherever you are, this is going to be a great recap or also a great primer for what's to come. Then here's the, the, the idea that's been buzzing around my head. It's about stop memorizing and start thinking. It's a memory coach. This can sound counterintuitive, but this will all make sense. And I've been talking to, to lots and lots of people over, I don't know, since probably since the beginning of the year uh, about this. And I think there's some real value at the heart of what I'm going to be sharing today. And I'm quite excited about it. And the third thing is we're going to do a, a short activity, things which are actionable so you can take away and put what we do today into practice. So the first strategy is the GROW model. Now, you know what? I really, really love this model because of its simplicity. It is so simple, yet so valuable. And what it's really there to do is give you clarity on what it is you want to achieve. And more importantly, why do you want to achieve it? Because once you understand the why behind things, once you understand the reasons, this creates motivation. This is the thing that's going to give you momentum. In the coaching world, we call this the fizz. We all, you know, and if people use the grow model, if you're a coach, then you want to get people to that point where they really understand not just what they want to do, but why they want to do it, because they kind of get fizzed up and they get excited. And that creates energy and momentum. So that's the first part of the GROW model. That's what the G stands for. The, the next part is really about understanding the reality of the challenges that's going to show up. What's going to slow you down? What's going to get in your way? What's going to stop you? And usually what you'll find is when you're thinking about what you want to do, <laughs> what will actually come into your mind quite a lot are those challenges. So you want to capture those things. The next thing is looking at, okay, if I understand what I want and why I want it, and I understand the things that could get in my way, you know, stop me from getting there, then what are my options? So you take one of these challenges and you come up with three to five, maybe even 10 ways of how could you overcome this challenge? And what's great about this is once you understand that picture of what you want and why you want it, what's in your way and the options to overcome it, you have essentially a map, a map that you can use to navigate through those challenges and get to the place where you want to get to. And the W really stands for what will you do next? So the G is about the goal, the R is about the reality, the O is about the options, and the W is about what will you do next? Tiny habits. <laughs> okay, I've got some nuns here in habits and we can imagine they're very tiny. Uh, and so the idea of tiny habits, and you, it, if you've listened to me go on about this, you know I'm a massive, massive fan of BJ Fogg and tiny habits. I'm a certified coach and that stuff. I was about three years ago. And it's a really simple way of integrating strategies, behaviors, skills, habits in your life. And you do this by just taking a behavior you want to create and you, you do the very, very tiny version of it. And this is why it's called tiny habits. I'm not going to go into it here. If you're on the blueprint course, you know what this is. And I've got free stuff that people can go through. If, if you end up watching this, you have no idea what the total memory blueprint course is. Well, you can, you can get started doing tiny habits for free. You can just go check that stuff out. So, but, um, I like it because it's not just, about improving your memory or learning faster, which is obviously my areas of focus, you can use tiny habits in any area of your life. You can use it to create more energy to be, to be healthier, which in fact, if you have more energy, it's much, much easier to learn. Uh, I tend to have a fair amount of energy. I always have. Um, and by the times when I feel a lack of energy, I know I can create the right kind of habits and behaviors to ramp that energy back up. And with tiny habits, the reason I started doing it in the first place was because I wanted to share with people a strategy that would help them bust through learning curves. 
you know, you get to that point in the beginning, you're very motivated. One week and a half in, you go, oh, I don't know if I want to do this tonight or I can't be bothered or you, lack, you start procrastinating. It's a great way to bust through that. Okay, now we get into the memory strategies themselves, the chain method. You will have used this a lot, and you know I put a lot of stuff out there. I do these daily videos, and people can like, train the memory using the chain method. Ten simple items we do for those things, but you, you, the chain method, in my mind, is fairly misunderstood in terms of people don't use a chain method in a way where they really get value from it. And you really have to look at what's important to your life and figure out, can I use a chain method for this? Can it help me do this better? I use it a lot in meetings. I use it a lot when I'm networking for business, but also in social situations. I use it all the time when I'm coaching. And a lot of that's about remembering conversations. Um, I also use it for giving presentations and talks. I also use it when I'm listening to someone else talk to remember what they've said. The chain method can be used for information and in books. It can be used for any kind of knowledge. Maybe you're studying. It's one of those techniques that fit in with the other ones that will go over that helps you actually consume and learn. So it's very, very powerful. And it's just, what I love about it, it's just so simple. It's essentially about creating stories in your mind. What could be easier? And then we get to the second core. This is the foundational memory technique you've got chains and you've got palaces now in the blueprint i refer to the to these as memory networks and i do in my books as well i do this because people talk about the body system the roman room method the method of loki memory palaces the rhyme system the number system there's all these different systems you know what they all do the same thing but what i've, I've noticed what i've observed is that People quite like the term memory palaces. So I thought, well, let's go with that because if people like it, let's, 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 let's go with it <laughs> because they know what it means. But essentially what these things, these tools allow you to do is classify information in your mind, arrange information in a sequence so it's very easy to recall. And with this, one of the great benefits is you can memorize and recall rapidly. And then we get to what I call reference stories. Now, this is a term I just made up because what I find is there's some images you create, some stories you create for information where it's very similar to the chain method where you link images together. However, they don't necessarily need to be in an order. So the chain method, everything follows a sequence. One item is connected to the next, connected to the next. With a reference story, it's more like watching a scene in a movie. It's more like seeing many images connected and you can separate them in your mind, but you can see them at the same time. You know, to give you an example, one of the uh, examples in the blueprint is inventors and their inventions. So one of them is the miner's lamp. So who invented that? It was Humphrey Davy. So in your mind, you imagine maybe a friend called Humphrey, if you've got one, and he's holding Davy Crockett's gun and he has a miner's lamp. Brilliant. There's only three images in there, but it doesn't really matter how they're connected. You might have him doing something, actually being you know, inside a cave with a miner's lamp and he's got his gun and maybe you start to add some emotion to that and you add some tension. So now it becomes like a scene, very difficult to forget. And so that's what a reference story is. And as you look at the story, you think about what does it actually mean? More to come on that because meaning is key to everything. And then we have the next three strategies, which is all about bringing stuff to life, making it stick in your mind. Sense memory, this is a Stanislavski technique. So it's an acting technique. Um, I learned about it when I was an actor, a young actor, but it's brilliant for improving your visualization by involving all of your senses. And if you know about creative memorization and how memory techniques work, then if you go to the blueprint, you do, this is a great technique dialing up so this is this is actually a technique i created which was a metaphor so rather than me saying hey you know what make something bigger in your mind make it smaller imagine there's hundreds of them you know what imagine there's more color in it what can you hear what can you feel what's happening right now describe rather than saying those things what i ended up doing is go using a metaphor so i would say look there's a dial from one to ten if you if you turn up the heat on that dial what 
happens. And what tends to happen is things become clearer, they become more intense in your mind. Next, we have movie magic. So movie magic is a fantastic technique to just consolidate what you have memorized. You know that situation where you first remember something and it feels huge, but after you've rehearsed it, after you've used some repetition, it feels smaller and smaller and smaller. This is what movie magic does, but it does it rapidly. And then we have, sorry, this picture makes me laugh. <laughs> this dog, very cute. We have creative listening. Now I use this technique all the time and it's really a combination of chain method and memory palace, but more than that, it taps into some very, very deep listening strategies and uh, your ability to become very, very focused and present. It, I won't go into the detail on this. In fact, I did a, a masterclass on this a couple of weeks ago and you can find that on the site. Then we have numbers, you know, important to some people, not to others. If you work with stats, analytics, data, anything research, that were numbers is important, then you just need to know, do that stuff. If you've been through the blueprint, you know that this is where it gets chunky, right? A lot of people will drop off here, they'll skip it, or they'll come back to it. But you know what, once you've got numbers, it's there for life. It's in your head and you, it's such a valuable tool. And then we have visual notes. Visual notes for me, is about comprehension, it's about meaning, it's about understanding, it's about being able to break something down into its component parts and seeing how things fit together. It's about taking concepts and complex ideas and having them make some kind of sense to you by relating them to things that you understand and then hypothesizing and working with that and then putting stuff into practice and rehearsing. So visual notes, Usually, if I'm, learning, if I'm learning something complex, let's say I'm working with a technical architect or something, then I will create visual notes first to understand. And then I will use something like the chain method in the memory palace to create my visual cues or primer images. Hugely powerful. You need to learn how to do this stuff if you're not doing this already. And then you have mind maps, which is a slightly different take on visual notes. Now, I love mind maps as a problem solving tool. And I mean, this is, and at the heart of it, a real thinking tool. This really is a thinking tool. And it's also great because it has a bit more of, of a structure, but it's free as well. So as a creative tool, I love mind maps when I'm creating. Problem solving, creating, and also I'll use a mind map, let's say once I've read through a book and once I've memorized stuff in a book, I'll use a mind map as a reference tool as well. And then we have the focus board. Now this comes at the end of the blueprint course and this is all about being productive, being effective, making sure you focus on one thing at a time. And then something that was kind of shows up throughout was this idea of primer questions. Listen, if you've listened to any of my stuff before, you know that this is at the core of everything that I do. Asking the right questions that direct your focus. The, this is the easiest way to learn faster, improve your memory, and also get a load of other stuff done. So let's do something very, very rapidly. We're gonna memorize, or you're gonna memorize, those 14 images. Now, I'm not gonna use the memory palettes just because it'll take too long to set one up on Google, etc. So we're gonna use a chain method. And I know you can do this yourself, but I'm gonna give you the story just so we can do this at a speed. Let's start from here. I'll tell you a story. Imagine that story in your mind as clear as you can. You know what to do here. Just imagine it and let that story fill your mind. And remember, if you get halfway through and you think, ah, I've missed something, don't worry, just stay with the story. We can recap. Here goes. Imagine you're in a garden where there are beautiful trees and things growing all over the garden. Into the garden come a pack of nuns in tiny habits. In fact, the tiny nuns with tiny habits and the tiny nuns with habits are carrying chains, these big, heavy chains, and they chase you into a palace. And then they put the chains all around the palace and they, they lock up the palace. And you run to the library in the palace where there's all these books with all these stories and you touch one particular book, which is magic. And as you touch this book, it fires up 
your senses. It fires up your senses. Your brain goes crazy and off it goes. And then you run to the sundial. You run to the sundial and you turn the sundial. And as you turn it, you get teleported. Yes, you do. You get teleported to a movie. And this is where the magic happens. Of course it is. As you look to your left in the movie, what do you see? You see this guy. You see this dog. Just tr He's trying to listen. He's saying, what are you doing? I'm trying to listen here. But you know what? He's not being quiet because he's playing with the dice and the dice have numbers on them. And he rolls the dice. And what happens to the dice? They go and they land on this notebook and inside this notebook are lots of visual notes it's beautiful and as you open up this beautiful visual notebook what do you find inside yes you know what you find you find a map and you take this map this ancient map and you stick it on your focus board and then you notice on your focus board just on the right hand side is a question mark yes a big question mark Okay, so just have a little go right now and see how many of these items you can remember. Okay, so good. So hopefully you got close to 14 there. And if you didn't, don't worry about it. You just need to go over it a few more times and it'll get locked inside your head. So here's this idea that it's not really an idea. It's kind of how I've operated for years, really. But I've realized lately I've been talking about this a lot. I was uh, working with actors last week and it, and it came up in a workshop I was running and probably from the beginning of the year, I, I probably primed myself around this. It's shown up everywhere. So now I'm aware of it. And I thought, you know what? You might as well just talk about this and, and pull it out specifically. Because I think it's a really important thing to understand. And it's this. It's about stopping just memorizing and start thinking. Now, that may sound like an obvious thing. However, I'm being very specific in terms of those 14 strategies. And specifically, what I want to pull out were these two. Because when you think about the chain method and the memory palace, most people, I think if they ask themselves, would think that these are memory tools, they are mnemonics, things which just aid memory. And a lot of times people think about memory, they think about memorizing, remembering, recalling. And a lot of the times people think, well, that's a fact. And maybe it's not really an idea or a concept. You know, or maybe it's not really about understanding and meaning, but really it is. And so probably for the last 25 years, I've always really considered these tools as, yes, memory tools, because you can absolutely remember stuff faster, especially stuff which maybe doesn't maybe make sense in the beginning, technical things and you know, anatomy and stuff like that. But in my mind, they've always been amazing thinking tools. You know, first and foremost, because they allow you to understand, they allow you to get to the meaning. And that's where I think the true value is in something like the chain method and the memory palettes. And so this is what I usually say to people. And, you know, depending on the group that I'm working with, I'll say, look, if you do a chain method, just like the one we've just done here, see the image and then see the fact. So let's say people are learning something which is more knowledge-based or studying. I'll say, look, just say what the fact is. See the image, but then say the fact. See the, the, the miner's lamp and, you know, your friend Humphrey with Davy Crockett's gone, but actually say what it means. Miner's lamp, Humphrey Davy. Say the actual fact. And when I'm working with actors, I'll go, look, see the image for the line you're about to say, but actually say the line aloud. And the image might actually represent the meaning of what you're going to say. And likewise, if someone's doing something which is more complex, it's an, it's a, it's an idea. Um, it's something which maybe people are trying to explain the architecture of a back-end service, a front-end website, whatever, and how those things connect. There might be a few images that represent that idea. So see the image and say the idea. So see the image, say the fact, the line, the idea. Now, here's the thing, though. When you see the image and you see it, what's actually happening but just before that is you have to think about it. So you see the image and then you think about the fact, the line of the idea. And then you say the fact, the line of the idea. And what's really happening here when you think about it is you're getting to what it means. And that's where the real learning happens. And that's also the meaning is what transfers things into your long-term memory. Here's the magic. The chain method 
and the memory palettes act as a visual map that helps you get there quicker. And it helps things stay for longer, depending on how vivid they are. And those maps are always there. So, so look, this is the core concept. Stop just memorizing and start using these techniques, specifically the chain method and the memory palettes as thinking tools. Because when you make that shift, something quite interesting happens. What I've observed is that there's also less stress when you try to learn something. <laughs> because you're not thinking about memorizing. You're just literally using these chains and the palaces is, is, is thinking tools. So a great example is presentations. So let's, let's imagine this. Let's imagine, I said, Luke, I'm going to give you a challenge. Take those 14 images, find a friend, a partner, whatever, and it, just tell them very briefly what these 14 strategies are and what they do. And maybe one of them, you go a little bit deeper. Now, the beauty of this is because you've been through, let's say you've been through the Blueprint course already, when you talk about grow, you've done it. When you talk about tiny habits, you've done it. So you can, you relate a real life story to that. So it makes sense then. So the, I mean, th this technique for the for presentation, by the way, is brilliant. The chain method no longer becomes you trying to remember what you're supposed to say. You use it as a guide to think about what you're saying when you're saying it. <laughs> I, I don't know if that makes sense, but you know what? It's amazing when you, when that clicks, because what happens is there's just much more confidence about what you are saying. I hope that makes sense. But you can apply this to, let's say, a book that you're wanting to learn. Memorize the table of contents. It's the first step. It's the first primer step. Because then once you've read the book, yes, you may add more images or memory palaces for facts and data and stuff like that or concepts. But then you can probe your mind with this visual map. And you can use it as a thinking tool. You can think about those concepts in the book. You reflect on what they mean to you and what you already know. You make all these interconnections and then you abstract your own thoughts and ways you can put into practice and then you could do it. Wow, brilliant. So you can use it for anything. So first question. Now, if you've got a paper and pen, this is good. If you don't, just think about it. That's okay. What could you do in the next week to test out using the chain method or memory palettes as a thinking tool? Don't overthink this. Just, and it, look, have this be something which is realistic. Don't go crazy. I'll memorize a whole book. Don't go that wild. To keep, you know, do something simple. It might be as simple as, you know what? These 14 images I've just memorized, I'm going to tell a friend. And when I tell my, my friend about it, I'll just, it'll allow me to think through what each one of these techniques actually do. But in my own words, because the great thing when you use it as a thinking tool is that you own it and it will, you will add your own experience into it. So what would it be? Think about that now, write it down, or just have it in your head. So this is a week from now, next week. So you've got at least seven days here. You know, what, what will you do? What would be your goal? And what way could you test it out? Now, as you think about doing that, let's say it was as simple as telling a friend, or it might just be memorize the table of contents of a book. Then what would be your biggest challenge? What would be your biggest challenge? Time, energy, motivation, procrastination showing up, the fact that maybe you're working and you don't have energy when you come back at night. Maybe you don't feel you're confident enough in the, with the techniques. What would it be? Now, there might be a number of challenges, but you pick just one. And the first thing, it pops into your mind. So hopefully you have that now. Write that one down. What is the biggest challenge? Now, here we go. I want you to come up with at least, at least two ways you could overcome that challenge. So let's say one of them is, you know what? I, I don't think I've got time in the next week to do something like this. Well, well, it, if you did have time, what might you do? Now, whether you actually do it or not is a different thing, but you, you're playing a game here. So, and you treat this like a game as well. It works well like that. What might you do? And then finally, how committed are you to achieving that goal next week. And think about this, just in a scale of one to 10. And again, when you ask yourself this, be instinctive. If you're at a five, it's never going to happen. If you're at a seven, it might happen. You need really to be at an eight or a 10. So this is just a good way of gauging how realistic this goal is. If you're at a five, maybe you need to make the goal smaller, or maybe you need to ask yourself, how can I get to a five to an eight? Have a think about that. So just realize where you are.
if you're watching the replay, then put the answers to your questions <laughs> in the comments, and then I'll ping you back if you've got a specific question that you want to ask off the back of it. If you don't, and you've just got those things written down, and you want to go do it, well, then go act upon it. Go do it, and then tell me, how did you get on? Did you achieve your goal? Did, did any of those challenges actually happen and show up? If they did, how did you overcome it? And did you actually complete it at the end? So there we go, Look, I hope that's useful. I hope all this stuff is valuable and you, you, can, you pick something out of there. Um, if nothing else, it's a great recap for what's inside the blueprint. Those 14 strategies, the 104 lessons in there. So sometimes it can be easy to get a little bit overwhelmed or lost, but when you pull them out like that, it's kind of easier to get your head around. And just this idea, a thinking tool, not just a memorization tool. I hope that's been useful. I hope you've enjoyed that. I will be back at some point with another session. So please join me there.